Good afternoon everyone, this is Harley from RNFL and in today's video we're actually going to be checking out some of the Etemodia flowers that are actually blooming here in Bradenton, Florida. Now, it is currently April 28th of 2021 and my Etemodia flowers have all been going off but the one that has been going off more prominently has been my Lisa Etemodia. So I actually have a few Lisa Etemodias here in my yard but here is where the main one is that is actually flowering currently. As you see here is the Lisa Atamoya tree. It currently stands about maybe four and a half feet tall. It's not the tallest tree, but as you see currently it is loaded with flowers and I wanted to make this video to show you guys the flowers and just talk a little bit about the Lisa Atamoya because it is such a good fruit and Atamoya variety overall to be growing if you're in central to southern Florida. So here's a closer look at the Lisa Atamoya flower. Now during the time of this video, it is currently 10.30 in the morning, so 10.30 a.m. And this is the ideal time when Anona flowers will be flowering, usually in their female stage. Typically they will go into their male stage later in the afternoon, maybe around 12 to 1, or you know, later in the afternoon times. But in the morning times, you're going to catch all your female Anona flowers. So you could tell this is the female flower of the Lisa Atemonia just because of how open it is and how tight still it is around the petals. Another way to tell that it is ready to pollinate or that it's in the female stage is because it would actually be very fragrant. This flower is actually super fragrant. If you were here right now, you would smell strong notes of, of berries and sort of a citrus undertone, but it really smells like uh, Captain Crunch berries or something like that. Now the Lisa Atemonia is also known for being very tasty and also very berry tasting and also has a pink blush to it so it's also you know very reminiscent of uh, berries tropical berries so it's really cool to actually smell this flower and actually be able to have the resemblance to flower fruit and overall you know the taste as you see the Lisa Atemoya is also pushing on new growth everywhere and the leaves of the Lisa Atemoya are typically very roundish but this one is still young and is still adjusting I recently planted this one about a month ago so it is still looking really nice. As you see right here, we have a better look at, of the Lisa Atemoya. And just going down, we can observe some other flowers that the Lisa Atemoya has. As you see here are two more. Now, both of these flowers right here, one right here, and then the other one right here, these are both in the female stage as well. And like I said, you could tell this one's in female stage just because of the tight petals right here. And if you look into it, like I said, you can observe a really fragrant smell. And if you're unsure which stage the Atemoya flower is in, you could typically observe because actually the inside of the petal, I believe the stigma, will typically be very wet and sticky. Uh, I don't know if we can see a good shot in here, but if you actually, so if we can try to look, the light is observing kind of like a sticky substance. It kind of looks like wet right there. And that is how you could tell if it's in female stage because that is what the pollen will stick on. And like I said, there's also various other ways. If you were here, you would be able to tell how fragrant this Lisa Atemodia flower is and actually there is not a male flower on here that I could show you but currently the tree is loaded in female stage flowers. Now something I also want to talk about is the origin of the Lisa Atemodia because it actually has a very nice origination here in Florida. Now the Lisa Atemodia was actually first pollinated by Mr. Har Medin. Now I believe Har actually pollinated a Libby Cherimoya with pollen from a red sugar, sugar apple variety. And that's how we ended up with the Lisa Atemodia. And it's cool to know that Har actually pollinated himself you know, with his own hands and you known out, he created this beautiful variety that I'm now growing here in Bradenton, Florida. And I believe the Lisa Atemodia was one of his uh, most popular varieties that actually became marketable, you know, to the general public. So as you see, the Lisa Atemodia here is grafted onto Cherimoya rootstock. And I've also heard online that, that any kind of Atemodia fruit can be, its traits can be genetically modified due to the rootstock. And in this one, it is uh, Cherimoya. So Hopefully we get a really good tasting Atemodia, Lisa Atemodia, you know, I have no doubts that it'll be really good tasting, but it's really cool to kind of know a little history on the Lisa Atemodia, you know, being bred by Mr. Harmadine. And like I said, he used a Libby Cherimoya variety with uh, the red sugar apple pollen. And I actually want to check out another Lisa Atemodia here that I have here at my house. Now this one's actually in a really cool spot. It's actually right in the front of my house. And this Lisa Atemodia too is getting really good sun. And I'm gonna be really looking forward to this one overall right here.
as you see right here, this Lisa at the Mondia as well. It's really beautiful. You can kind of see the rounder shapes of this one, but this one is also too, just coming out with beautiful flowers everywhere. And I'm really looking forward to shaping this one overall. So if you guys uh, have a Lisa at the Mondia, you can give thanks to Mr. Harmony Dean for producing such a nice variety here for us to grow in Florida. So thank you guys so much for watching this video on my Lisa at the Mondia's here I have in my house in Bradenton, Florida. And now I'm really gonna be looking forward to them flowering and fruiting amongst the years but overall it's going to be really cool to watch their growth overall and it's cool because lisa at the Moya is such a beautiful and good tasting fruit variety now if you guys don't know i actually did fruit a lisa at the Moya last year here in bradenton but the thing is is with that lisa at the Moya, i actually ended up killing because i literally pollinated every flower that a lisa that the lisa at the Moya had and it was bigger than this tree right here but as you know, it is not good to pollinate every flower on at the Moya, especially when you plant it in the ground and are training it, you know, and are raising it. So once again, everyone, this is Harley from Garden of Fell. I really hope you enjoyed this Lisa at the Moya video of the flowers and overall the growth. I can't wait to fruit it in the years to come. And I'm really looking forward to showing you guys the growth of this beautiful tree. So everyone, I'm Harley from Garden of Fell and I hope you have a great day. Bye bye now.